Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today I wanted to kind of wrap up my reviews of the Orchard Audio products I've had. Um, I did a review, and it'll be linked up there, of the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra DMC 2.5 Dual Mono Class D Amplifier. And it's a fully differential balanced dual mono design. And I think I made the statement that I'm not sure you could spend $25,000 uh, and beat this amp. And I stand by that statement. It is a remarkable piece. Watch the review. Leo, who's the father confessor, chief cook and bottle washer, head designer, owner, and guy who opens the mail in the morning at Orchard Audio, was kind enough to send me his Pecan Pie Plus Premier Streamer Deck headphone amp uh, it, and preamp. And it, that's a wonderful piece. So uh, we're going to talk about it. It is a preamp, obviously. It is a fully balanced design. So balanced out. Now it does have single ended out as well, but it is a fully balanced internal design, which is great. It uses a Raspberry Pi or Pecan Pi as its streamer module to run Volumio. And Volumio is okay. Uh, it works as well as any of the online or the, the title, Cobuzz, Spotify apps that you'd find on your tablet. And it so it works really well that way. And it gives you access to Title, Coba, Spotify Connect, Title Connect, and all of those other things. And spe speaking of connections, hey, if you guys like the video, I would really appreciate a subscription. Please give me a like and a subscribe. Anyway, so it has the, all the normal features you'd expect in a modern streamer, um, but it goes a little bit further than that in that I can access a NAS drive if I, if I have a NAS drive on the network, it can find it. It can also access a hard drive full of files, whether they're FLAC, uh, or Wave or DSD, and it does DSD really well. So it is really kind of a multifunction thing. And then, of course, your remote control becomes your tablet running Volumia, and it works really well. Now, how did I have this thing? How did I test it? Because I only recently just got the amp back. I did uh, give it off to someone else, and then I just got it back to finish up the review here. Well, I used it connected to um, my Evo 150 as the amplifier using this as a source. I connected it via balanced. I also connected it via single-ended, just so we can, I can say I did do that. Um, I also connected it via Artivana through UPnP, Universal Plug and Play. So it was on my network, and Artivana can find it from my PC, and I can just stream anything I want, title, code, buzz, hard, well, everything, all my files to it, and that worked flawlessly. I also used it as a DAC for a CD transport, and I also plugged some other um, digital sources into it just to check it as a DAC alone. And we're going to talk about the DAC in a minute because it's really amazing. Uh, as I mentioned too, it also has a single end and balanced headphone jack. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but it is on 32 ohms, it's 1.7 watts. At 15 ohms, it's 363 milliwatts. At 600 ohms, it's 90 milliwatts. Uh, I used it on my vintage Sony MDR V6s, which are 32 ohms. It sounded great. I also used my Sennheiser Mastrop 6XX, which are 600 ohms. Sounded great. So really, really nice. I don't have any balanced headphone. I should get a balanced cable for my Sennheisers, but I haven't yet. So headphone amp is perfect. As a preamp, it works great. As a streamer with Volumio, I have access to everything. But to me, the real party piece on this one is the DAC itself. Now, Leo has chosen to use the AKM AK4499. EXEQ and 4191EQ dual hybrid chipset. Now, what makes this really interesting is I traditionally am a multi-bit ladder deck kind of guy. Um, I just prefer the sound of it. To me, it's a little bit more analog. I never really warmed up to Delta Sigmas. Um, you know, my shit Bifrost, which has been my reference deck for years, is a hot rodded version, but it is a multi-bit. Uh, and so I'm, I, my, my ears are tuned to that sound and kind of that's the sound I prefer on all stuff. Um, so most Delta Sigma DACs leave me cold. And, they're, and AKM has come out with this hybrid part of their Velvet uh, Veritas technology, which I think is remarkable and I think is going to be a game changer with whatever new product AKM is cooking up right now. Uh, and I know there's a couple things in the fire. So how does it work? Well, first of all, Leo, when he designed the board, he used the Crystech uh, CCHD575 Chris, uh, oscillator clock. So the signal coming in, if it's coming from the streamer, it's all I squared S, so there's no issues. If it's coming from an outside source via spit up, if you remember my video about don't chase the DAC chip, with a spit up input, 
whatever the source of the signal is, in this case, a CD player, that's where the clock lives. And this has to chase that clock timing. And I guarantee on any spit of signal, there are clock issues. There are timing issues. No question about it. That Chris Tech Oscillator can clean that up and make it work really well. And in conjunction with what goes on with the 4191 chip, which adds additional noise shaping, some digital signal processing in the digital domain, all of that occurs before it ever gets to the 4499 chip, which is actually a switch, excuse me, switched resistor Delta Sigma chip. So it's a hybrid between, you know, kind of not, not really R to R, not ladder, but R to R multi bit and Delta Sigma. So what do you get? Super high signal noise ratio, real big dynamic range, characteristics of Delta Sigma DAX a warm sound and a powerful sound characteristic of R to R and multi-bit DAX. So it is really kind of the best of both worlds. And it is, I'm smitten with this chipset. I really am. I did another review of a different uh, product with the same chipset in it and I, it blew me away. And this no different here. Little different though, because this is truly ba balanced in and out. And Leo really has taken his time in the design of this. So, you know, here, here's the thing. So, AKM 4499 and 4191 chipset is a current based chipset and its biggest competitor, whose name is the other name for a sword, um, there is our voltage based. Now, let's think about that for a second. Voltage based means you can have lots of voltage, but not much current. So you go touch a Van de Graaff generator and your hair stands on end and you got 100,000 volts going through your body, but you're not dead. Why? Because there's no current. But go stick a paper clip into the wall socket at your house and it'll knock you off your feet and could kill you. And that's only 100 volts, but 15 amps. So it's got current. So once music in its digital format is as a digital bitstream, it is still a sine wave just done digitally. And once it's converted to analog, how do we measure analog signals? Well, frequency, it is alternating current, alternating between 20 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz. And you measure alternating current in amps. So a current design DAC can carry more power. Lee needs far less uh, amplification to get the signal up to two volts to go out on single ended or up to four volts to go out on balanced. So, I have a little DAC that I'll be doing a video on that is just a simple USB powered DAC, but it has three op amps in it. And it has to because one op amp has to provide enough voltage to drive the other two to get two volts out on the RCA. And again, it's a voltage based DAC. With this, Leo uses the TI 1612, PA 1612 op amps, which are really, really good and high precision. And that's plenty of power because the DAC can pass current, it's plenty of power to drive the single ended and the balanced outputs. And I think, and current is far less susceptible to noise. And that's a key thing. When we talk about noise shaping and DSP and susceptibility to noise, it's not so much a noise you actually hear like a scratchy sound or a distortion, but what it does is it raises the noise floor. And the more we raise the noise floor, the more we obscure super fine detail that can get lost in that noise floor. This thing is absolutely as quiet as a tomb. It is got, it is, the background on this is so inky black, it's unbelievable. So it's noise floor is phenomenally low and it measures very well as, as well. And I'm not a big measurements guy. I'm more, does it sound good kind of guy? Um, cause I don't listen to measurements, honestly, although there is value in the measurements, I must say that. So this thing with the AKM chipset, just amazing. It reinforced this infatuation I have with this, this hybrid chipset from AKM. And I think AKM's velvet sound technology that this utilizes, I think that has, um, going to have a big impact on audio, uh, moving forward. I know that AKM has got some other stuff in the works. Um, and I think that this could be a, uh, a the better alternative to Delta Sigma without all of the expense of FPGA, which obviously is a, basically a circuit you can program to be a DAC. Um, and then, you know, R to R ladder DACs, they're very expensive because of all of those hundreds of resistors have to be so tightly toleranced. I mean, literally tenths of a percentage point tolerance that it's very expensive to build those because the failure rate of the resistors, you know, for everyone accepted, three are rejected. So that gets really expensive to do. So, and, and you'll see that on the real high end stuff. Um, but I think this AKM chipset and the way Leo's implemented it here 
is very compelling, really, really compelling. So to, to describe it, and this will sound very similar to the other DAC I did, uh, review I did. The base is solid, it's tight, it's deep, it's extended. It feels like it's just got all the power in the world. Um, very nuanced though, there is fine detail in the bass. Um, you know, listening to a, a big E string bass like on Kind of Blue in the beginning, um, that you can hear the, you know, you can hear his fingers actually plucking the strings. And then all the way through the frequency range, there are no ills. There are, I could find nothing objectionable about the sound quality of this deck at all. Um, I was just completely enamored with it. Clean mid-range, absolutely smooth, natural, vocal sounded perfect. All the instruments throughout the range sounded perfect. And where I really start having a problem with Delta Sigma DAX is when we get in the upper mid-range, lower treble and on up, they have this digital glare. And there are a certain character, there are certain DAC manufacturers that are known for having a digital glare on their DACs. Um, and this has none of that. Um, it is just clean and crisp and extended. And so because it's current based, peaks and transients are just unlimited. You can, they can go as far as they want to go without any restriction. And as they decay, that decay just hangs there and all of that detail is revealed to you all the way out until you just, oh, it just went away and you just don't hear it anymore. Just like if you were in that room live. And I think that's really, really compelling. Um, you know, closely mic jazz trios in a club. You can hear the room. You can hear you can hear people's foot tapping on the floor. Um, there is a great piece by Les McCann and Eddie Harris called Swiss Movement, and they do a piece called Cold Duck Time. And you can hear while Les McCann's banging on the piano, you can hear him scatting under his breath along with the notes he's playing on the piano. And you can hear it as clear as day and is just so fun. And it makes that listening to that recording so exciting because it's like you're there and you're involved and all of those things, which to me is what all of this is all about, is really enjoying the music. And this helped me enjoy the music like only one or two other products, DACs that I've ever heard do or did have done. So really, thumbs up on the uh, Pecan Pie Premiere streamer DAC, headphone amp, preamp from Orchard Audio. It really is a great piece. Now, the unit is not inexpensive, but it can be bought as a kit. As you see it configured here, it is, I think, $1,500. I'll put the correct price down here. But he does do another version of this without the screen um, with a Burr Brown chipset, which from what I understand is really good. And I don't know exactly if I'm correct. And again, I'll put it down here if I'm not. I do think it is a uh, Burr Brown multi-bit, uh, R2R multi-bit chipset um, rather than Delta Sigma, but I could be wrong because what do I know? And I don't do a lot of research before I sit down and do these videos other than the product I'm talking about right here. So the Orchard Audio product, you can buy it as a kit if you want to. You can buy just the DAC board. You can assemble it yourself or you can buy them completely built. Um, I'm not sure what the waiting list is, the waiting time is on these, um, but this is very compelling. It is very compelling. It's a great streamer. Volumio is fine. It is an amazing sounding DAC. It's a great preamp. It's an out awesome sounding headphone amp. Gives you balanced out, single ended out, spit of coax in. Uh, it's got USB on the back. It's got an RJ45 network connector so you can put it on your network. It just it does a really, really good job. And it doesn't need a remote control because you got Volumio to control everything. So anyway, Again, I really like this. I'm, I'm very impressed with the Orchard Audio products. My first exposure was this amp back a few weeks, weeks ago when I did the review. And this just it reinforces my conviction that Orchard Audio, Leo at Orchard Audio knows what he's doing and builds a really good product. So anyway, that's that. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a like and a subscribe. Most of the folks that watch my videos aren't subscribed and it would help. I know I sound like I'm pleading for subscribers, but if you only knew, the increasing count of subscribers gives me more credibility with the manufacturers and it makes it easier for them to say yes to me when I ask them for product, or it makes it easier for them to reach out to me to see if I want to review product. And of course, the more product I can get, the more videos I can create and the more fun we can have with this all together. So I would appreciate the like and the subscribe and comment. If you have any questions about this, you have any comments or questions about the AKM DAC chips, I'm going to do a deep dive on just that chipset 
uh, in another video, but it's going to be really boring and not a lot of people are going to watch, but I like that geeky stuff, so I'm going to do it anyway. So comment. Anybody who comments knows I read the comments, I answer the comments, I respond to them. Uh, I enjoy that interaction we have one another. And you guys need to send me playlists, please. Um, I put together a community post uh, with a bunch of playlists in it. Um, I would love to be able to share the music that we all listen to with one another, and especially any of my overseas viewers. What are you listening to? What's popular where you are? I'd love to hear what that is. Um, otherwise, you know, I only get exposed to kind of the music I normally listen to or the artists I kind of normally like or, or, or favor. Um, and I'm always looking for new music because I just think that's the most fun part of this thing. So share your playlist, please, please. In the description, Amazon affiliate links, you know the drill on those. My playlist at the bottom. I think that's everything I need to say about this. Again, the Archard Audio Pecan Pie Plus Premier Streamer DAC Preamp Headphone Amp. Really good product. Very, very lovely sounding piece. Amazing. Anyway, thank you so very much. I appreciate the time you give me. This is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, saying now it's time for you to go listen to some music. Thanks so much.